touchdown. Welcome back to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network. Seth Levitt, my main man, OJ McDuffie, and Juice. Forget about Wolverine and Cyclops. and I, We got the real X-Man here. That's right. Xavier Howard dies into the fish tank. What a glorious day. Man, it really is, Big Seth. You know what I mean? You know, X is one of my, one of my favorites, of course, all time. Appreciate Being that. the big Dolph fan that I am, man. But, yeah, having That's this, a big um, deal. Like, he yeah. typically, when defensive guys walk in here, there's not a lot of love. Yeah, and we'll oh, talk a little bit about the love I have for him. <laughs> yeah. Because he's not, he's not your typical defensive guy. True. You know what I mean? True. So, yeah, no doubt about it. Good stuff. You know, so now that we've, you know, broken the ice with X a little bit, and X, let's just start with that part, that part already. Love the nickname. I thought Juice was cool. You know, as a DB, that's kind of nice, right? Because that wide receiver, I'm Xing him out, right? Right. Or if you're playing X, you know, you got no chance against me, right? As right. a wide receiver, right? We were talking about this as you were walking in today. I remember, gosh, it's three, four years now. Back in 2019, the Dolphins had their business combine. Um, Caleb asked us at the Jason Taylor Foundation to host some guys. That There were some guys that wanted to start a foundation, and you were one of those guys. Yeah. You had just, I think, like just formed your foundation, really trying to figure out what those programs were going to look like. Can you talk about what it's been now for from that moment where we went across the street? Remember, we went to Cypress Bay High yeah. School. You saw those poets. I, I know you were really moved no, by that. No, I was that. really into the poet, man. You know, I thought about it because I'm like, I'm always doing something in Houston. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I do a weekend in Houston, a little football, um, football camp, and also do something in the house, like with school work and stuff like that with the kids. It's like a it's like a fun day, like a weekend um, at my high school. So um, I do that. I was like, man, let me do something in Miami. This is this where the fans at. This where where well, I play at this home for me also. So yeah. I also wanted to do something here and I just couldn't come up with a deal like what I want to do. So um, me and my guy, um, Polo, we end up, man, let's do a softball game. But talk, talk about the work and how your foundation work in Houston has evolved, how the work that you do in the community here has evolved and why that's so important to you. It's so important, man, just just giving back to the community, man. You know, um, I come from the inner city of Houston and, um, you know, I seen older guys um, that I was looking up to like Andre Johnson. Mm. Um, with the Houston um, Texans, they end up doing like a little turkey drive or something like that, a giveaway or stuff like that. And I was in high school during that time. I think I was in high school or middle school and we ended up going up there getting turkey. So, you know, just being that guy, just giving back to the community, man, just giving people hope. Speaking of that, I mean, we talk about foundations. Most times foundations are created by life experiences. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I started my foundation back in 2006 with my mom because I grew up in like a single parent home. And so we, um, you know, everything we started targeting was, you know, single parent moms or single moms and or, you know, kids that didn't have the dad around or, or the mom around or whatever it might be. You know, so so I know that, you, you know, being from Houston, specifically the Fifth Ward, you know, I believe. Can you tell us about your life growing up and, you know, how those experiences molded you and shaped you to be the person that you are now? Man, just I feel like just everything I've been through, just seeing, you know, the bad. And you know, I was always that kid, like I seen it, but I didn't get in trouble with it. I ain't mm. get, I, I was more focused. And you know, the guys I seen being followers and stuff like that, I'm like, bro, this is not it. You know, I'm gonna be the one that get my mom out this situation, my brothers and sisters and everybody. And um, and that's exactly what I did. And that's why I came up with the with the um, the brand Make Them Believe. Because um, guys, you know, they don't, they don't believe until you, you put it all together, until you, until you come successful and something you do, that's when they start believing. That's why I end up coming with the making believe. You know what's so interesting about that is that, you know, I know there were guys when I grew up that were probably better athletes. Than right. Me. But they, you know, I always talk about the whys in the road. They went this way man. when I was, and I went that way. Yeah. And I kept getting those opportunities, man. So I know there's some guys that, you know, you grew up with that yeah. were hella athletes, hella ballers or whatever, yeah. and just, it didn't victim. work out for him. Yeah, they fed victim, man. And that's I seen that a lot. Yeah, you know, my mom kept me on, on target, man. I mean, she grades, we moved, we had to get out of certain situations. Who kept was there anybody that helped you along that way? It was my mom. Your it was mom my mom too? also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just seeing her working hard. You know, um my mother had seven kids, five boys, two girls, and I was I was the oldest boy. And my sister was the my sister also my sister was the oldest girl, but she played sports also. She she went to college to play softball. And um she used to whoop me all the time in basketball. <laughs> you know, as I got older, you know, it was over. It started getting a little muscles. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm about yeah. to take advantage of her. And um, you know, it was always the crazy part. None of my, none of my um, our parents played sports though. That's the crazy part. We just end up where we come from. We that's that was our way out. So we was playing playing against each other and making each other better. So I find it odd, Nikki, that 
was a better athlete than me yeah. growing up. But once I could beat her, she stopped playing me. Did your sister stop right. playing That's me? That's how it was. She, yeah. she, she, was, she was like, no, I'm not playing you no more. Oh, that's, that's how it be. She that was like, I'm hilarious. not playing you no more. That's exactly how it was. <laughs> that's too funny. So, well, we're talking about being a hooper, and I, I told you I heard the interview you did uh, just a few months ago, and you talked about your hoop game, and that was like you, you knew you were going to the NBA at one point. Juice, he said he had a Derrick Rose type game. Is that yeah, what he said? Yeah. He was yeah, a Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose. Rose type game. Great finisher. Uh, but that great finisher. I love that. But that there was a coach at your high school, Wheatley High. Yeah, Wheatley that, High. That that essentially broke your heart. Oh yeah. He's he like, did. bro, you're five eleven. Man. Tell me about that. Who was that coach? Coach Lewis. I still talk to him to this day. Yeah. You know, um, I keep him by my side. Like, that's the guy. He don't have no filter. When I'm playing bad, he gonna let me know. <laughs> I love that. He gonna let me know. He gonna keep. He gonna keep me on my toes. And you know that guy, he pushed me. He ended up um, switching my position from quarterback to to cornerback because I was no a quarterback. Kidding. Yeah, he ended up. He was like, bro, you're not going nowhere from quarterback. So he put me on the defensive backside. Um, uh, my junior year last playoff game, and I ended up having two interceptions, and um, I stayed on the defense side of the ball ever since. The man's a visionary. Yeah, he said. Wow. He didn't really want me to play basketball, but that's I've been playing basketball since third grade. When we was in playoffs, you know, on the guys on the basketball team, they was like, come on, we need you. Right. He was like, man, you need to focus on this football. You, you can deal with that basketball later. But um, that guy, man, Coach Lewis, that's my guy. That is awesome. And he's still doing it, breaking people's heart. Yeah. <laughs> Putting them on defense. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know what, let's, let's, let's go back, a, a, fast forward a little bit from, you know, from high school and, of course, from college days. And, Let's talk about the Dolphins a little bit. In 2016, we trade up in the second round to get you. There's not another player on the roster right now. <laughs> you realize, you know where yeah. I'm going, right? Yeah. There's not another player on the roster right now, uh, other than two, since, since 2018, other than Baker. yourself. Yeah. 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 Wow. 2018. You've been in 2016. There's nobody other than you know 2018 on this roster, man. You know what is it like for you being the longest tenured Dolphin in that locker room right now? Man. You know, it, it's, it's a great feeling, man. Um, this organization kept me here and hope to continue. So, um, you know, it's it been, it been a great time, you know, just seeing everything, just been through everything with the Dolphins, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Coming in the league, first playoffs, I'm like, oh, man, this team. You know, um, then um, having went back into last year. Right. So, yeah, I've been through it all. I've been, been through a lot with the Dolphins also, with the dealing with injuries also, just seeing everything, though. But it's been great. Right. With, with all that being said, all you've seen, all you've been through, the coaching staff, the injuries and stuff, what is your perspective on it now, man? How, how have things changed over these years that you've been with, with the organization? Man, this year going to be a special year. <laughs> yeah. Do you have, though, like kind of a greater perspective because of the fact that you've not just been in the league, uh, you know, for what this will be your eighth season, eighth I believe? Season. Yes, sir. So not just seven going on eight seasons in the league, but here. So literally seeing all the different transitions there's been with different regimes and everything, does that give you different perspective to walk in that locker room and see the roster and see the coaching staff than maybe a guy who's in his second or third year here would have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, some of the guys I talked to about it, uh, especially Javon, um, you know, um, just seeing it all, seeing, like you said, seeing all the transactions and stuff like that. And it's like, um, you know, you, you meet a lot of guys. I met a lot of guys here. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's what it been all about, like the brotherhood that they've been coming in, bringing in, and guys that fit the fit the system. And you know, um, I'll do the. I say Chris, Chris doing a great job getting stuff done. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's no doubt, absolutely. stacked for sure. Yeah. So speaking of Javon and speaking of the 2016 season, um, I heard you tell him. So I, I I think it was two Pro Bowls ago. Yeah. He went right after his rookie him. year and kind of yeah. followed you around and inter did an interview with you. Um, for the Dolphins, uh, with the Dolphins content team. It was a great interview, and what jumped out to me, uh, I absolutely loved it, is you told a story of your rookie year, and you said Cam Wake. Yeah, Cam Wake. My did guy. not speak to you. No, he didn't. Penn State guys, man. Penn State <laughs> guys. Maybe that's what it was. So, you know, first of all, he said he didn't say a word to you till you made a nothing. play out on the field. He didn't say nothing. You know, and uh, – I respect him a lot from that, man. And it's like, um, cause like, you know, I got drafted 38 overall. You know, um, 
you, know, you got some guys that get drafted and feel like they made it, and you know, feel like they ain't got to do nothing. And, um, yeah, first round pick. Sometimes. Yeah, first yeah. round pick. Yeah. <laughs> every and, um, time. Yeah. Every day. Hey. <laughs> Dude, every time, pick. man. I wasn't gonna go there, but I'm yeah. gonna go. Every time, man. He's throwing a shot now. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, and um, I seen who he was. You know, I seen his work ethic and stuff like that. And, and um, soon I made a play, he ended up saying something to me, and I was like, man. This dude ain't say nothing to me. What I did to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what been was cool the play? Ever since. Do you remember what um, the play was that you made and what did he say? Uh, it was a play on. Um, it was an interception on um, Kenny Steele, but he just came to me and shook my hand like good stuff. Okay. Right. Yeah. He, Cam ain't really talk as much, but right. when Cam on the field, he mean business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he mean business. But so that for him was like a big. That's that's a big outgoing movement. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Did that experience shape the way that you work with younger guys? Because, I, I mean, I think about this past season. You want to talk about you as a mentor. Oh, yeah. There, the, the DB room that started <laughs> versus the DB room that you ended up playing with, you had yeah. a lot of young cats, and they, I mean, they stepped up. You think about the Cater Kohus, Noah stepped up. I mean, even Javon, Javon is, yeah. as fabulous of a player as he is, he's still a young guy. So you were in this mentorship role. Did that Cameron Wake experience have any impact on the way that you work with and mentor young players? Yeah, I had to do it different, man. You know, um, it, going into my seven years, so, you know, it's, these guys are different. Yeah. You know, you, uh, I feel like you can't have that same approach Cam did. You know, I had to, had to get, in, get in early and talk to them and let them know about the, the, how this how this league works and right. what, what we got to do on the back end and everything. You know, coming in in 2016, you were playing with some old school cats. Yeah. Now you're playing with some new school dudes. Yeah. It's like you 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 transition from dealing with you know the they, they calling me to old. the way these new new school kids. They are. calling me old. I hate it. Bro. <laughs> I'm like man, I gotta I gotta show these guys I still can run. <laughs> you gonna have to. Like yeah, like doing the off season, like competing, running and stuff like that. They calling me old here, and I remember. Back in the day, I used to call Rashard Jones over here <laughs> during my time. And now I'm like, man, look at it backfired on me. Let's, let's talk about Xavier Howard, the, the playmaker. Mm. Um, 28 interceptions since you're in the league, the most by any player since 2016. You know, obviously that's an incredible number. Uh, you're dominating your era, bro. That's it. Bottom line, you're dominating it. Where did you d develop the knack for, you know, getting your hands on the ball? Because let me say this. I always say this. You know, DBs. Or wide catch. out they can't catch. <laughs> exactly. But that's not you, though. I hear that all the that's time. That's not you, though. You got I hands, hear that all the man. Time. You, I mean, obviously, you got hands. Yeah. So, where'd you, where'd you develop that net? Man, um, literally playing receiver. You know, I, I end up um, getting that ball skills early on. And um, the crazy part, my freshman year, I said my freshman year, my rookie year, um, Rashad Jones, like, man, you in a position. Make the play. I went making the plays. Mm. And he was like, bro, just make the plays on the ball. And I end up doing that, and I took off from there. I heard you say that when you went to Baylor, you thought you're going to be the next RG3. Yeah, for you know, sure. To just be a playmaker. So how much do you enjoy having the opportunity to turn defense into offense? Deep down, I'm still an offensive player, I feel like. There it is. <laughs> you know, I still want to score touchdowns and stuff like that. So I'm like, man, since I'm on the defensive side, I got to score a touchdown. I got to do something <laughs> to get in the end zone. Right. And that's been my whole mindset, like get to the end zone. Love it. I'm going to tell you what, and, and not counting, I mean, obviously last year was great, but some years before that, you had to try to score because it was it was kind of hard to score. Oh, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah, you had to, yeah. You had to, yeah. Had to, had to get in the end zone. That's a fair point. Those, yeah. points, those, are real, those aren't just icing on the cake. Those are real valuable right. necessary points. Uh, but clearly you like to dust off the old skills. That's oh, what yeah. it seems like. Yeah, no doubt. You know, we're talking about, you know, obviously, you know, your, your skills on both sides of the ball. But there's a, there's a guy that I had to deal with, man, that loved to put his hands mm. and make plays, pick it off. Put his hands on people. One of your coaches, man, Sam Madison. Sam Madison. <laughs> Two nine gave me fits when I was playing against oh him, my especially God. when he was young, and I was getting, I was an old head. Yeah. You know, what I mean, these young bucks putting their hands on me, man. How much interaction and how much do you guys talk about the physical part of the game, putting your hands on, you know, making plays, trying to take it to the house? Because Sam, I don't know if Sam really tried to take it to the house a lot. I think he no, but got, he's gonna got go his get yards it. and he yeah. probably got out of bounds and got okay. down, but. You know, but the physical part of it, you guys kind of remind me a lot of each other. Yeah, um, man, me and Sam, we always have some good conversation. Because he always talking about uh, him and Water be going at it. He was like, boy, you would have played back in my day, I would have choked you out. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he always saying that. So it's funny to hear you say that about Sam, though, because I, I remember being at a practice, and Joe Rose said that 2-9 that had the best jam oh, he ever yes. saw. Like in, in football, playing, watching, everything. He, 
He said, guys, he literally would freeze guys at the line yeah. of scrimmage. They just couldn't get off. Oh, yeah. He had them long, them long hands. The long long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no matter if you beat him here, he's got, if he can get a little recovery and get yeah. you off that pattern, I, you know, I, that's what receivers hate. Don't, please don't touch me. And that's why I try to be, I try to be like a fly to receivers because I know, I know how it is playing receivers. So I'm like, bro, if somebody touching you 24 7, you hate it. Like, yeah, oh, you man. hate that. So that's why, that's, that's why I try to get my hands every chance I get. Damn right. Yeah. Now, Sam would tell you about it, though. Yeah. I mean, nobody, he would run it like oh, nobody no, he was could talking. run it. You seem <laughs> like you're talking. more of a quiet kind of Oh, guy. yeah, I'm quiet, man. I'm quiet. I don't really oh, say much. Oh, Sam would. Yeah. We played in San Diego, and they had an open-air press box at the time, and you literally could hear him during the game because he had, you know, he <laughs> had that. little squeaky voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> you could hear it. You could hear it. When you look at the entire roster, and certainly on your side of the ball, there's a lot of dudes. There's just a lot of dudes. How do you get past being excited is not going to put points on the board. Right. Being excited is not going to get any more interceptions. It's certainly not going to get any more wins. How do you get past that excitement and not just look at who's sitting in their locker and be able to take all that quote unquote potential and apply it to, to turn into what you really want it to be? I feel like you got to put the work in, man. You know, uh, like everybody, like what they say, everybody win during the off season or right. on paper and stuff like that. We're all that. going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, we are. Every, all every team teams. that are going to the Super Bowl based off the paper. And, you know, you, you got to put the work in, man. It's like one thing about this league, man, you don't put the work in, it will humble you. So we definitely got to put that work in on, on, on our side of the ball. And, you know, also, offense going to do their thing. All right, before we let you get out of here, man, we know, you know, the big-time players make big-time plays. On a big time podcast, yes, we consider right. our, we consider ourselves a big time podcast. We are right now, right, right until now, someone right? tells us otherwise. <laughs> uh, so this next segment we call the fish tank two minute drill. All right, so I mean it's certainly big time. We're going to put two minutes on the clock, mm -hmm. and we're going to run a no huddle offense, and we're going to see what kind of answers you got for us. Okay. All right, and uh, all you got to do really is just read the quarterback's eyes, read and react. Cool. Yeah, yeah. you got that. Right. Yeah, I think he's got that on lock. Yeah. Sure. Right. Here right. we go. Not only do you have 28 career interceptions, but you also have 83 passes defensed, which is good for fourth all time in Dolphins history. I don't even know if you know that or not. So Sam, the aforementioned Sam Madison is first. He's followed by Pat Sertain, of course. You are one PBU away from becoming the guy, or tying third place. Do you know who is above you with 84 pass breakups? Might surprise you. Mm. It's also mm, Tanner no. question, man. If you're looking at this guy, not, it's a loaded question. It's loaded. Yeah, I don't, it's I don't not know. a DB. It's not. No, that's the shocking part. What? It's my boss, Jason, Jason Taylor. Taylor. Eighty-four pass breakups. Wow. But you're about to pass. And he leading with touchdowns, also, right? Yeah. He yeah. He's got a lot of. How many he got? Nine. Oh damn. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, you, got, you got a big year coming, dog. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, you still got, got time, though. Yeah, he can't get any more. Uh -uh, I can promise you that. He ain't going to get any more. You got to stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Man, here we go. That's crazy. We're going to head back to Houston, where it yeah. all started. The greatest Houston rapper of all time. The Ghetto Boys, Mike Jones, or <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, my. The Ghetto Boys. <laughs> the Ghetto Boys. It's a group, though. I told Renzo. Yeah, it's a group. Right, right, right. The Ghetto Boys. He's got to know who Bushwick Bill is, man. Oh, yeah. See, okay. There you go. All right, what about the greatest Houston singer ever? We got Lizzo, Beyonce, or Kenny Rogers. Beyonce. 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 Yeah, she put it, she put Houston on the map. Yeah, yeah you know, he wasn't going to say Kenny Rogers. Okay, <laughs> final question. Who is the toughest Houstonian of all time? The Undertaker, George Foreman, or Xavier Howard? I'm going to say George Foreman, man. Okay. I'm going to say George Foreman. The crazy part, I just watched his movie. It was a good movie. Oh, did you really? And he grew up in Fifth Ward, too. Is that right? Yeah. He's a Fifth Ward guy. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. There's something in the water, Juice. Yeah, yeah. man. There's something in the water. Yeah. That is the two-minute drill. He, of course, is Xavier Howard. Appreciate you taking the time, man. I, man, know you thank got, you I know what it takes to put these things on. So I know you got a lot of things going on. So spend yes, some sir. time with us. Yes, sir. Thank Meaningful. you. Absolutely. Thanks for diving in, man. Thank you, man.